Welcome to the small scape. Today I am continuing my series on driftwood. Today we're talking Malaysian driftwood. Well, I've gotten a number of requests to continue my series on different driftwoods. I like to look at them individually, but also keep in mind, I will be doing at some point very soon a video that has all of the different driftwoods and all of their different pros and cons. But today we're gonna to be talking about Malaysian driftwood. It is one of my favorites. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, first off, and then we'll go through the pros and cons, but first off, if any kind of driftwood can lower your pH, so keep that in mind, especially if you have a low KH, that will definitely uh, affect your pH, so just keep that in mind. Especially Malaysian driftwood, and you'll see that, you'll see why in, in just a little bit here. But for the pros, first off, it is a very heavy driftwood, so that will allow it to sink easier. Definitely a good idea to boil this driftwood if you do like to boil your driftwood. I would highly recommend doing that one. We will get to that later. But as you can, you may guess, if you are familiar with it, it does release a lot of tannins. Which tannins are good for the fish? They pro provide a lot of benefits, but some people do not like the darker color that it brings. So just keep that in mind that this wood in particular will release a lot of tannins. But this is a great driftwood. I think this is one of the first ones that I started working with and it is very simple to use. I personally like to use a single larger piece, maybe, maybe a couple, but they have very, I would say kind of simple shapes to them. They're kind of like big blobs of driftwood. That's how I think of them. They're very dark. So if you are looking for a dark backdrop to highlight very bright colored fish, that's how I like to use this. If you use a dark substrate, then it will, it will pro provide a very dark backdrop, of course a dark uh, backdrop on the back of your tank as well. You may want to keep that in mind. Unless you like to have a lot of contrast, then I would highly recommend using this driftwood because of its really dark color. I would highly recommend using it uh, with a very light colored substrate, a light colored sand or even a white colored sand that has a lot of impact. The other thing that I really like about this is, well, it's, it can be kind of architectural and you really only need, like I said, one piece. Uh, a number of my tanks in the studio here, I used, well, I think one of them I used two, but basically it was a one single piece and they're larger. So I think a lot of people refer to that as a macroscape where it's a very large, especially this one, uh, the first one, it's just a very large piece of driftwood. It is not a nanoscape with a lot of detail. It's like a, just a peek into a section of a uh, larger biotope. And that, that's also a reason that I like this one. It does provide a lot of interest, especially when you're using other botanicals. I think it goes very well with this type of driftwood, but that will also uh, add tannins and lower pH. Keep that in mind. But yes, just a single piece can lend itself to a very natural looking biotope sort of feel. And you can get a lot of interest, even though it's not very detailed. It's not a very detailed sort of driftwood. I think it does in the certain kinds of shapes. Matter of fact, the OCA, this last year, I'm still kicking myself because there was a piece of driftwood, Malaysian, that looked like a wave. It did. And I did not go back for it. And I've been kicking myself ever since because that would have been really, really cool. But anyways, now this is a great driftwood if you have anything like plecos. Plecos love this and it will, they will kind of eat on it and it's it's safe. It doesn't have, generally speaking, it doesn't have a lot of sharp edges, which I really like, especially for bettas. Bettas are, are great for this kind of driftwood scape because it doesn't have a whole lot of the sharp edges like say spider wood or manzanita branches that you would not want to keep a long fin betta or any other kind of long fin fish. Another pro for this type of driftwood, especially if you're looking at this compared to something like the manzanita branch, you will not have any of that kind of white fungus that attaches and kind of creates itself after you've scaped it after a couple days or so. Generally speaking, I don't see a whole lot of film that develops on this driftwood, so you might want to keep that in mind as well. So uh, a lot of pros for this driftwood, but now let's talk about some of the cons. There are a few, namely 
the one that I already touched on and that is well it releases a lot of tannins and whereas a lot of people do like the black water type of look and feel and like I said it is really good for your fish a lot of people just don't like it they want a crystal clear tank I get it frequently I do too so that is why you will want to boil it now if you are if you are dealing with larger size tanks and even some of these tanks you may not have a pot to boil that uh, the entire piece so you're going to have to be boiling a section at a time and turning it upside down and turning it to the side so you may have some work ahead of you you can also just soak it soak it for a number of probably number of weeks in a bucket and just keep changing out the water and that should alleviate a lot of the dark color that's going to leach out from this driftwood the other thing to keep in mind that it will actually break apart you're probably looking at a lifespan of this driftwood. I think there, there have been some scapes in some of the larger tanks down in the fish room that I did that I actually eventually had to pull out because it was starting to break apart and you will find pieces there even when you're cleaning the tank or when some of your fish are knocking it about. You will have little pieces break off and it can be looking a little messy after a while and it will just start reducing in size. So it does have a lifespan, I would say, more so than any of the other, uh, some of the other driftwoods. And the last con, you're, you're not going to hear a lot of cons for me because I do like this driftwood. But if you are into a lot of detail and you like a lot of detail in your aquascapes, especially if you like the nano aquascapes and kind of a little, uh, little uh, diorama sort of look, it's not gonna add a lot of detail. Sometimes actually in this last tank that I have the shrimp in, I actually used a piece of driftwood in place of a rock because it was really very rock-like, just very a big chunk of driftwood, but it's easy to work with. I really enjoy it but if you're looking for a lot of detail with your driftwood then you're probably going to want to go for something like spider wood that will add a lot more interest as opposed to a very dark piece of driftwood because keep in mind as dark as it is in the store wherever you pick it up it will become darker when you put it underwater so this is just a little quick overview on one of my favorite driftwoods malaysian driftwood hopefully you enjoy the video let me know do you like working with this? Um, and do you remember your first tank that you ever aquascaped? Dine and out. What driftwood do you use? And do you remember what kind of driftwood you used? I would actually have to look at pictures because I have no idea what kind I used. But let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.